The Super Bowl set Chiefs 49ers, a rematch of just a few Super Bowls ago where it, the teams actually look quite different. Jimmy Garoppolo is no longer the quarterback of the 49ers. You have Brock Purdy there, but then you have the usual suspects in Kansas City with Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, and then just a ragtag bunch of wide receivers. They didn't even have Kadarius Tony today. But let's talk about three key takeaways from each game, the AFC Championship game and the NFC Championship game, before we talk a little bit about both representatives of the AFC and the NFC in the Super Bowl. And don't mind me, my lights just turned off and we're gonna turn them right back on here in the video. And you guys want to get a good look at me, right? Of course, this is YouTube. You want to make sure you, you can see me. Anyway, back to it. Three takeaways from both games. Let's start off with the AFC Championship game between the Ravens and the Chiefs. The first takeaway is one that hurts my soul deeply. Lamar Jackson played absolutely horrible. If Lamar Jackson actually played a good game today, the Ravens would be probably the Super Bowl representative of the AFC. And we'd be talking about Lamar Jackson looking for his first Super Bowl. Instead, we're talking about missed opportunities. We're talking about a second half where the Chiefs were held four straight possessions. Punt, punt, punt. And you guessed it, punt. And the Ravens were not able to capitalize and score a touchdown. Out of those possessions, all they got was three points. If they even just capitalized out of two out of those four possessions, we'd be talking about the Ravens being in the Super Bowl. Instead, we're talking about the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes looking to create the best dynasty since the 2000 Patriots. That's how good they are. So that's the first takeaway. My second takeaway, and I feel like this is a lot about the Ravens, but I promise you the third takeaway will be about the Kansas City Chiefs is Zay Flowers. He made a boneheaded mistake. It was horrible. All the momentum was turning to Baltimore. And instead of just putting the ball down, taking the first down, making it first and goal, he decided to flex, spin the ball, ball get a 15-yard penalty, move them back. And to make matters worse, and I feel so bad for Zay Flowers because he's a rookie, and despite him having the two worst mistakes in the game, he was the best player on the Ravens offensively out of any weapons. He fumbled at the one yard line and in essence ended the Ravens season. You can't do that, but I guess that's why everyone's been always asking, go get Lamar Jackson, a veteran wide receiver. And instead of getting him a veteran wide receiver that's been good, they got him Odell Beckham Jr. who ended up making about, I think $14 million, but about 400,000 per catch because he didn't do anything all season long. It's pretty sad, pretty sad for Lamar Jackson. And the third takeaway is, man, what can we say about Patrick Mahomes? He might be, and I don't think he's the greatest quarterback of all time, but he's the most talented quarterback to ever play the game. He's in his sixth season. He's made it to now his fourth Super Bowl. He's looking to win his third Super Bowl. And that would make him, what, three out of seven, a little bit about 42% to Brady. And I always say I don't think anyone can pass Tom Brady by winning seven Super Bowls because it seems impossible. But if anyone can do it, it's Patrick Mahomes. And we're talking about a game that's going to be a huge, huge legacy game on Super Bowl Sunday. It's one of those games, if Patrick Mahomes wins, all of a sudden he's 3-1 and one in Super Bowls. If he loses, he's 2-2 two and two in Super Bowls. And that makes it sound a lot worse than 3-1. and one. And three Super Bowls with four more to go to Brady at his age of 28. We're talking about being in striking distance of Tom Brady and the most talented quarterback of all time. Now let's move to the Detroit Lions game versus San Francisco 49ers. And I'm just going to give you a warning right now. If you're a Detroit Lions fan, I'd probably turn this off because you probably have already had enough heartbreak for the day. And you probably don't want to hear about this. But you guys just blew a 24 to 7 lead at halftime and the worst maybe one of the worst collapses in nfc playoff history you had the opportunity right there to go to the super bowl and in the fourth quarter the great thing about dan campbell all season long is his ability to take big risks and have them pay off and it was a little weird because 
in the end of the first half, instead of taking a big risk, he kicked a field goal. And then in the fourth quarter, instead of kicking a field goal that would have tied the game, he went for it. And then San Francisco answered right away. And that ended up costing them the game. Because it would have been a lot different if the game was tied and you're asking Brock Purdy, who's really good, but is Mr. Irrelevant, to go down and win it for the 49ers. Instead, he was handed the ball and Christian McCaffrey did the rest. My second takeaway, Christian McCaffrey doesn't get enough credit for how good he is. The guy is the most talented weapon in football. I know some people are gonna say Tyree Kill, Justin Jefferson, but where are those guys? Ty Justin Jefferson didn't make the playoffs. Tyree Kill, he left in the first round. And the team that Tyreek Hill left, the Kansas City Chiefs, well, they're in the Super Bowl. So you tell me how important Tyreek Hill is. Wow, Christian, Christian McCaffrey is good. Christian McCaffrey is the best running back we've seen since Adrian Peterson. Christian McCaffrey, if we want to be honest with ourselves, probably should have been the MVP of the NFL this year. But he's going to have a chance to cement his legacy in the Super Bowl, and that's going to be amazing to see. And my third takeaway is, wow, Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant, all the way to the Super Bowl? He's the lowest paid player in the year, around $400,000 a year. He has a roommate still in San Francisco because he can't afford buying his own place in San Francisco with that money. Well, maybe he can afford a little place, but you know what I mean. And Brock Purdy has become the third youngest player to start a Super Bowl on two Sundays from now and he is the first Mr. Irrelevant to ever get to a Super Bowl so congratulations to Brock Purdy he just made himself from kind of rich to generational money because you know he's about to sign a 50 60 70 million dollar contract and he's set forever so great for Brock Purdy and last but not least just two key storylines heading into the Super Bowl I think are going to be pretty obvious but we'll talk more about the Super Bowl as it approaches two weeks from now First storyline, can San Francisco finally do it? They haven't won in Super Bowl since 1994. Kyle Shanahan, their head coach, lost the Super Bowl as an offensive coordinator for the Atlanta Falcons in a very devastating fashion to the Patriots. And then he lost the Super Bowl to the Kansas City Chiefs in an equally devastating fashion. Can he get over the hump and finally win a Super Bowl just like his dad did? Because you know him and dad have dinner probably. And his dad's like, I've won a Super Bowl. You haven't. Go get that Super Bowl. And the second storyline, how obvious can it be? We're talking about Patrick Mahomes, if he wins, is on the quest to be already the second greatest quarterback of all time. And Andy Reid, the head coach of the Kansas City Chiefs, is already on the quest to be the second greatest head coach of all time. And all of a sudden, we're going to be talking about if they win one or two more together. Is Mahomes the best quarterback ever? Is Andy Reid the best head coach ever? Those are the big storylines to look for. We got two weeks to digest this game and no better place to do it than Vegas. And oh, by the way, last but not least, Taylor Swift will be at the game despite having a trip to Tokyo because she ends around 10 p.m. Uh, Tokyo time, which is 5 p.m. Vegas time. With the time difference, she'll be there 23 hours and 35 minutes before kickoff. I know a lot of you are concerned about that. And if you're not, you should be because it's going to be the highest rated Super Bowl of all time of Taylor Swift there. So many people who don't watch football are going to be watching this game because of Taylor Swift. And well, do me a favor here. If you got to the end of the video, comment your early predictions of the Super Bowl, like and subscribe to our page. My name is George Orjour. I go by George on Tap, part of a Sports on Tap Sports Network. You can find us everywhere, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, at The Sports on Tap. Really appreciate you watching. Uh, this has been a car talk. Don't do too many of these, but I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you guys next time.